Hello, and welcome to the Ascended Cast. This is your boy John. It's your boy Shiloh. We yeah. are without Matt. Oh, yeah. No, you're good, Matt. Go ahead. We're without, yeah, you just have someone else on here. <laughs> so we're without our boy Matt, but we have a great guest today. Yes, Let me good. go ahead and introduce him. Yo, hey, what's up, guys? You got you. Sorry, man. Yeah, you're, you're all good, bro. You're, <laughs> you're enthusiastic about it. Yeah. 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 I, love, I, love, I love this. I really do. That's dope. So, yeah, we're without Matt, but we got our boy Gatsby on here. It's going to be a fun conversation. Me and Shiloh are excited about this one. Yes, indeed. We got ourselves a man, a DJ. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Perfect, man. Well, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Give us a little background, what you do, what you're up to? Uh, yo, what's up, guys? My name is Gatsby. I'm a, I think I'm an upcoming DJ. I'm still coming up. Uh, for sure, I don't think I'm in the underground anymore, but yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, out, you're out of the trenches? Well, I mean... I love the trenches, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, I want to get out of it more. I want to be right. more like public, but I'll, I'll, like always have my stuff on the underground. Oh, yeah. I'm about that. We're going to talk about that. I have yeah, a lot of questions. I'm, for yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I have a lot of questions. So, so, yeah, man, uh, we were kind of talking right now, but you said you've been kind of doing this since you were 13. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been DJing since I was 13, but like, I didn't really take it as serious because the first time I actually DJed, uh, it was like at a family party. You know, oh, so like my uncle, I was just watching my uncle do his shit, you know, like I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I had no idea what it was. I just saw these big two turntables, uh, they were vinyls. So that's why I started off. I started, I started on vinyls, vinyls. Yeah. Oh, vinyls. So like I was watching him and he's like, you want to learn to do it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, bye. He just walks off. I'm like, the 13 year old kid with this whole big setup. I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do with this? I don't know what to do with this. Throwing in the box. Yeah, just, yeah. just throwing in. So I think that's like. When people ask me, oh, like, how'd you start DJing? And like, honestly, they just threw me on, and it was just like that. Um, but, like, over the years, like, I would do vinyls, and there was parties, like, I would go to, and I would have vinyls or whatever they had, you know? But, like, I would always take breaks from, like, Instagram, like, during high school. So when there was parties, like, people didn't really knew, like, I DJ. Like, I would talk about it, and like, you DJ? And then, like, yeah, DJ. And then, like, oh, well, we have this party. Do you want to DJ? I'm like, shit, like... Let's go there. I used to have like go under a different alias and it was whack. I can't believe I went under that. Yeah. Come on, we got to share it. We got to share it. I used to go by DJ Cloud with a K. Okay. I mean, it was okay. I, I just think in high school I used to smoke a lot of weed. So I, I think that's. So you were the Cloud. Yeah, so I was the Cloud. I kind of influenced it, but I'm like, I got to talk to people, yo, Cloud. I'm like, oh, no, nah, that's not it. So like what uh what helped oh, me? Yeah, actually does go hard. Bro. Yeah, I mean at the time it, it does like, go hard. Like cloud, and cloud goes hard, bro. The K two. But then, uh, like I had to be going like, yo, like, are you gonna take this serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna like take this serious. I was not taking it serious. Yeah. At the time. Like, I was just doing it for fun. I was just a high school kid, shooting the shit, going to parties, like talking to girls. So I think it was yeah. just like, oh, like I love doing this. You thing. were more for like the the cloud at that time. Yeah, yeah, for the cloud at the time. But then like also during high school. Um, I took a bunch of extra curricular like classes, so yeah. I always knew I wanted to make music. I just didn't know I always wanted to DJ. Uh, so in okay. high school, I took film um, for four years, so I can learn how to um, so I can learn how to make YouTube videos and stuff like that. Okay. And then I took business class for two years, so I know how to market and everything myself, like know how to make websites. That's what I did, and then I also took piano for two years just so I can learn how to play oh, keys. So I feel like I always knew what I wanted to do, yeah. but like, DJ just kind of got thrown in. I know I always wanted to make music, always wanted to make music, but DJing, like, I never thought about DJing until like, that, you know, like high school came yeah. and it was just like that. But, um, my bad, I fucking went off. No, you're yeah, cool, bro, it's your, your story. Oh, yeah, I like, like it. but they're like, um, if you want to take this serious, like, you should change the name and like, at the time, I was like uh, overthinking. I'm like, damn, this thing sucks, doesn't it? And then I'm like, well, it's, it's all right, but it's not the best. So my friend kind of helped me. He's like, oh, well, there was this book you were always talking about. Like, what, 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 what book was it? And I was like, oh, like, no, no, it wasn't. Like, no, it was the first, my, my first, my favorite book. I like that book. Yeah. But he was like, oh, what's your favorite book? I'm like, oh, my favorite book was Supermarket by Logic. He's like, no, your favorite book in high school, you would always talk about it. I'm like, Oh shit, there it is, the Grey Gatsby. Yeah. That, literally right fucking there, that, that was it. Cause uh, I think I was cloud until like I was like 18 or 19. But yeah. like, like I said, I was 
really not really focus on that and life got in the way so I stopped with all music. I used to do YouTube, I stopped doing YouTube and I was like more focused on live trying to get money and then the pandemic happened and I'm like, you know what? Let me get myself a laptop. Like I've been talking oh I I've just been talking I'm talking shit out of my mouth, like not really like acting on this. I'm like, you know what? It's COVID, like let me just let me get my mixer, let me get my laptop, let me actually start making music, you yeah. know? And then just like that. That's dope. Yeah. I, I, you know, I really, really like that because uh, I was saying before, like, I feel like a lot of people, like, COVID, for many people, was a blessing. And obviously, they're yeah, for working, sure. But I feel like it was a blessing because it forced people to, like, really look and be like, okay, I have all this time. What do I want to do? Some people are getting cast out because they were getting the benefits. So it's like, what can I do? And I think it opened up a lot of doors for people to go explore stuff that they would not otherwise if it was for COVID. Yeah, I think COVID was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Yeah, it for sure was a blessing in disguise because, like, there's so much talent that's out there that people don't know, and that's what sucks. Like, yeah. you have to you have to grind for that talent, but that's where it's good, too, you know, because, like, those humble beginnings, like, that's where, like, you keep on, like, people be telling me, oh, like, you made it, like, I'm like bro, there's no way. They're like, oh, well, because I used to live in SB, in Loma Linda. Okay. But I, I moved recently to a house in Upland. Oh, And nice. so when I tell people I'm from Upland, they're like, where'd you live before? I'm like, SB. They're like, bro, you moved, you got out of the hood. I'm like, it's not really the hood, you know? Like, like I love like I love it out here, but, like, just the way people be looking at things, like, oh, you're doing this, now you're doing this. And then I think, I, I feel like I don't give myself enough credit and myself a lot of respect, but I... I still have like I feel like I still have ways to go because like this, good, this is only my second or third year really like doing it for real because I'm 23 I started when I was 20 so I feel like I still have a lot more to learn like, lots more people to talk to and like just get up there because I, I like I said I don't think I give myself enough credit but I still think like there's no. still enough work there's humble like there's a certain humbleness there but also like you're not satisfied like you're not comfortable and that's the big yeah. thing about it it's like if you're comfortable then you're gonna be careless. Yeah, and like that's like why I, I my almost had to go through. So that's good, man. That you have that mindset because um, you want to keep pushing that, that boundary more. Yeah, more I, so I want to keep pushing myself as much as I can. That's dope. That's dope, man. Well, yeah, no, that was cool to hear. I mean, uh, my my personal two cents is is that I love how you said you know I don't give myself credit for where you are at today. Because yeah. I feel like I feel like, you know, a lot of us, you know, we're we're forward thinkers and it's especially in your industry, it's like when do you truly know that you made it, you know? It is it is when you move house it is when you're playing at a certain venue, you know. I feel like for you look, looking at your journey and being like, man, like I'm I'm three years in and I've done these events, I've hosted these, like I'm 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 kind of known in the underground scene a little bit because like I said, bro, when, when I met you, and then I ended up seeing you, seeing you perform and play. I was like, I was like, oh, oh, it's like that. <laughs> he got me a jumping jump yeah. with no liquor too. So I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was so no mad. liquor. What about the extra cumulars? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> 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 That's the great thing that I love and respect about you is, is the fact that, yes, enjoy this journey. Enjoy the ups and downs. Enjoy where you're at today because three years ago, maybe you you wouldn't have thought you would be in the position you are today. Yeah, I don't think there's no way I thought I would have been here. So, so let's talk about that. You know, Let's talk about that journey, being a DJ. You said COVID hit. You started doing things. What started swinging your way to where you started to pull those connections to actually doing shows or whatnot? Oh man, I, I actually fucking love this question. Um, well, it's funny because like I was, I had a bunch of uh, DJ homies. You know, like people were DJing and like going to raves. I knew what raves were. I'm gonna give a little bit more backstory before I get into it. But, um, but I knew what raves were, but I didn't know like I thought they were like oh three hundred, four hundred dollars. I just I was an outsider looking in. I'm like, damn, it looks fun. Like I want to do that, you know. But um, like. For sure, shout out my homie um, Francisco himself. He really put me on. Like he put me on like heavy, and I love him for that. I still talk to him this day. He put me on Night Bass and like Bass House, AC Slater, all the DJs I love today, and everything. Um, but um, 
So I started working at Wawa Grill. So this is where it kind of really started. Um, this is like pre-COVID. So I met Fran, I met Chris, I met Carol, I met all these people that are friends. And he was a DJ, you know, he was, he was, he's still coming up in like an underground. And I would hang out with him and he had a mixer. And from time to time, he would invite his friends over. This is during COVID. So I would wait outside of the raids, the car raids, just to invite people back to my house. Oh, parking on the no parking yeah. lot. Okay. okay, outside the gates when people would pull up. I'm like, yo, I have a, I'm throwing an after party at my house. Come through. So That's people cool. started coming through. Like, I'm surprised my mom didn't get fucking mad at me. I know she was mad, but I think she kind of respected what I was doing at the like. It's like a she back and forth. She saw the yeah. intention of it. Yeah, yeah, it's like a back and forth. But I was inviting like there was people coming to my house, and then I was like, "Yo, like these people are at my house right now." And then that's when I would throw down. So that helped me a lot too. And the one time I did throw down after a rave, there was this guy. I keep forgetting his name, and I should remember his name. And I'm fucking up for not remembering his name. I think it's fucked up that I'm not remembering his name at right now. But he helped me get more into the underground. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, once I, was, literally after I DJ, like, I let everyone know that DJ, I had a couple of friends come over, so himself was there, um, I was there, um, a guy named Wade was there, his DJ Wade, he was there, so we would throw, like, little shows in the back because of that, because I didn't want to do that all by myself, you know, like, I didn't know how long to do that, but... You were just trying to figure it out. Yeah, I was still trying to figure it out, but when I met that guy, he was like, yo, um, I throw raves in the desert. And I want you to come out for me. Like, I want you to DJ in the desert. Like, at first, I was like, what the fuck would I go out to the desert? Like, yeah. I'm like what, kind of, what is this? Because I didn't know what the, I didn't really know what the underground was. I just thought, like, oh, club, this and that. So I had no idea what the underground was. I went, blew my fucking mind. I literally ate my own words how fucking awesome the desert raids and the underground. It's so crazy. Just at the time, I'm like, what the fuck would I do in the underground? Like, that sounds... Um, why would I be in the desert? No, man, my mindset too is like, as someone that goes to them, I'm like, why the fuck am I going to the desert to go, like, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, we're gonna give you this time and you're gonna play this time. I'm like, that sounds why. And then I went, ate my own fucking work. There were people there, fucking DJs, like, that I was meeting, like, talking to. And these people already knew my name because of this guy. And they're like, oh, you're Gatsby, right? I'm like, damn. I'm like, who are, who are you? Like, you're like, no, we just heard about you. You're, you're playing right now, right? And I forgot, not forgot, but I was on the line with them. And then I threw down, and um, this is when, like, I would have to bring my own laptop and stuff like that at the time, because I didn't really understand the USB and everything like that. So I didn't know, so I would bring my laptop, and all the DJs were looking at me like, what is this kid doing? I'm like, oh, like, I brought my laptop. He's like, no, get a USB. I'm like, I already get a USB. Like, I was still new to all that, so I didn't understand. And then... I was using my little fucking mixer or whatever mixer they had connected to my laptop, this and this and that. When I would drive my laptop, um, they would have to stop the show and it felt kind of bad at the time just uh, to connect to me in because I had my laptop. Because I, I, like I said, I didn't understand like the whole USB concept and I was kind of against it for a while. But like, oh, you need a USB. I'm like, how the fuck would I have a USB? I have a whole laptop right here. And now, why I have my USB? I have my USB. Yeah, USB is a way better, but. And then, uh, the shows kept going on and on, and I was like, you know what? I can do this shit, you know? Kind of like, for sure, like, I think I saw that again. I'm like, yo, that's, that's awesome. Like, I want to be able to do that. But, like, I was DJing great, so for them and other people, every time I would DJ, like, yo, who are you? Like, what are you doing after this? When's your next show? I'm like, next show? This is, this is my only show, you know? Because yeah. I didn't know. He's like, well, I'm going to book you for this one. Like, just people coming up to me. And I met a lot of people through the underground, through the desert raids. And I love it, so that's why I was like, you know what? I'm gonna build my own show. So there was this cave in um, a little bit past, up here actually, not too far, I forgot. A little bit, a little bit in the middle before going to Victorville. Okay. And there was this cave, and there were throw parties there. Throw, there were throw parties at a train. I DJ, I think that was my coolest underground too. I DJ on a train, like an abandoned train, and I thought that was cool. That did not, so wait, it's like an actual cave? Yeah, it was like an actual, actual it was an okay. actual cave. I've been seeing like that in like Europe, and like people doing that stuff, so like, that's an actual thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, caves and radio, that shit's sick. Like, no, like, it like, echoes. It, yeah. yeah, I think, oh my god, the acoustics in the cave were amazing. Yeah. Like, you thought the speakers were loud in the club? Like, go to a fucking That's what I'm thinking, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, like, shit was just bouncing off the wall, and you're like, damn, like, this is awesome. 
So I gotta get one of those. If you do one of those again, let me know. I, I think I want to, but like I think it's harder now because clubs are open. Everyone yeah. wants to go to a club. Like oh, okay. when you talk about underground like in the desert, people are like, Oh well, it was fun. But now the clubs are back open. Yeah. And even like right now, like uh, I was talking to my homie last night, like LA is having Renaissance, bro. LA is running events crazy. Yeah, bro, I heard they're running events under the highway. So yeah. I'm like, bro, that's honestly, if someone were to ask me, I want to DJ in the desert, like, I'd be like, fuck yeah, like, put me out there. Yeah. I fucking love it. I love going out there and hanging out with my friends, sleeping, just looking at the stars. It was, it was for sure like a milestone moment for me. But I was like, all right, they can do it. Maybe, let, let me try it. So I started doing it the first the first time I did it like um, I did it it was just me and my friends like we just we just ran it and we're like oh we were expecting maybe like just like not a lot of people come yeah. for our first event I think we had over two hundred people there Damn, yeah for our first fucking event and then we did it again we had three hundred people there and then we caught someone's attention in L A uh, their name is Shadow Underground Events or Shadow Events shout out to them. Cause they're based in LA, they brought their LA people to us. I think we had like at least like seven hundred people there. Damn. Yeah, so the cave, like six or seven hundred. Like I don't know if I'm just talking the shit, but the cave was just fucking filled. That took a while. So like we collabed with them, and I think that really helped us even more, and that got me out there even more. And then that's when clubs started opening up. Um, Oh, also shout out Persona too, because he's the one who taught me how to DJ on XDJ. Because when I was looking for DJs for my collective, when I was starting my collective, I was looking for DJs, so I threw a little thing in my backyard, and he pulled up. And he was like this, he's like a big guy, you know, like, I when he fucking walked into my house, I thought this guy was Russian or something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah kind of big. So that's my, yeah, that's my best friend. He taught me how to play on an XDJ. And this is the same time the clubs just started opening up, and there was this guy named Base Alien, uh, Base Alien, fucking Base Alien, and he would throw town, uh, throw down in Riverside. So clubs were opening up. Um, so this is like after I turned twenty one, obviously, you know everything like that. And he was like, "Oh well, I want to book you, you know." Um, he's like, "I want to book you and Persona for a back to back." I was like, "Damn, I never, I never done back to back. Like I'm nervous." And I was used to the stuff I was playing on. So I would ask for someone like, yo, would it be okay if I practice at your house? Because I never DJed on a CDJ before. I never DJed on an X an X DJ. Like I just had the the thing I was used to were bottoms, you know? Yeah. So like that's what I was kinda used to, but then I went to his house and he showed me how to do it and it kinda came easy because it was like a, it was like the vinyls. Like the CDJs. Yeah. When I got thrown on the CDJs it was kinda easier because they're like vinyls, but just more electronic, you know? Perfect. But the XDJ, he really showed me, literally shout out Persona, like, every time I have a big show, I try to have him come up there with me, because, like... That's your guy. Yeah, that's, that's my fucking, guy. that's yeah. my fucking bro, I know, like, like, yeah. like, I respect this guy so much, what he done for me, he didn't have to do that shit to me, he can, like, no, like, uh, fuck you, you know, like, but then, like, also, it was, like, a back-to-back, you know, so we kind of had to do it, but during that back-to-back, I was going to his house, and... He was just teaching me how to do it. I'm like, bro, this is awesome. Do that. We just became dope. sick fucking friends. And we're still fucking friends to this day. I, I love that because, like, how, how long has he been DJing for? Um, I actually do not know that. Yeah. Uh, he's, I, he's, more, he's, been, he's been doing it a little longer than you. Yeah, I, yeah, for sure. Way, way yeah. longer. But I think he's, uh, he's 24. I think he's 24. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so he's a year older than me. But, like, oh, that's he's sick, been, he loves the deserts. I know that for a fact. So that, underground guys, yeah. sure, okay. Well, I don't even think he's underground no more. Like, nah. no, Persona, Persona's out there. Like, right, he's, so. he's a good fucking DJ. Like, he just DJ for, like, um, uh, what's the 4x4 four four raids? Like, down, uh, where people take the 4x4s four four out to the desert and stuff like that and have bandas and shit like that. Oh, oh they just, he, uh, they just sing in the Joshua trend of that. Uh, yeah. Like, um, shower. Uh, he just did a show like that. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, and that shit was packed out. That's but, like, that's yeah, I don't even think, I can't consider Persona an underground DJ, like, he's out there. That's dope. Yeah. Now, what I was saying is I like it because, like, um, I'm really big on, like, whatever, like, knowledge you have, I'm trying to pay it forward, so, like, him doing that for you, bro. Yeah, like, that's much respect. He put you on. Yeah, he put, yeah. he put me the fuck on, man. He helped me so much. He, he helped me in that aspect. Like, even, like, our first 
So like when Club Star opened up, we played in Riverside twice because of Base Alien. He he booked us and we went back to back again. And the second time we went back to back, we had so much people from the underground come and show love for us. And that was I, we were just looking like down like yeah, we you know, yeah we packed out that fucking club. So we started, like we look, we still look back at the videos like damn we really really did this like this is my second real show at a club and we packed out the club. I thought that was cool like literally I, when I was thanking people and thanking the guy for booking me I was about to cry because like I'm so like thankful for that so thankful for the people even getting off stage people patting my back I'm like you know what like this this recognition is crazy I love it like. Not, I'm not like, it's not even trying to, hopefully not trying to show off, it's just like, like this is awesome, like this, the respect, the recognition, like people like tell me, oh, you fucking did it, like you fucking did that shit up there, I'm like, we didn't, like I didn't do it, we fucking did it, because I was with Persona, like we did that shit, like even people, like, there were some DJs at the club, like what the fuck, why are they playing that yeah. like, at the club, you know, like that too, I didn't really understand club music from the underground music, I was playing like bass house at the club. You know, that's that's why I familiar myself with like night bass and bass house. And a little bit of line house. I was strictly only bass house for a long time. Because I was like for a long time I think it was for sure my pride and ego. I'm like, no fuck that, like I'm bass house, like these people came yeah. for something else. I'm I'm not gonna give them what they want, I'm giving them what they need. That was, <laughs> that was like the thing I was thinking, man. That was kinda like something to me, like a little bit at the time too. Like I understand I'm bass house, but I gotta break even, I gotta they gotta be like fair, you know, it's a club. So let me throw some songs that'll have people throwing ass and stuff like that. And I think I've learned that over time. So I'm not only bass house now, I do bass house, tech house, a lot house, but bass house is me, you know, like yeah, that's your identity. Yeah, that's my identity. Bass house, my bass, that's Gatsby. You know, I'll I'll throw like I still play I play line house all the time and everything now. Like now if I'm at a club, I'm oh, this is who I should play. But I still play bass house, like I never been one for kissing ass, you know. Actually, I have, a, I have a question. Yeah. I feel like my name goes this pretty well. I think it's kind of like a two kind of ended question. Um, we like we go to a lot of festivals, but there's so many different elements when it comes to like dance music. Like yeah. Music. So like even in the underground, you guys at clubs, like festivals, like the people that may not have that knowledge. Like, can you give us like, a little bit of idea of like how the things are different? Yeah, festivals are honestly way better because right, clubs, okay. people. Clubs, people get like, angry, there's fights and stuff. I mean, there's that at festivals too, but that's I think it's really rare when it's at festivals. Like, Someone's off the rail. Yeah, 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 like, honestly, like, if I fall at a festival, people are going to pick me up, you know? They pick me up, dust, literally yeah. dust me off, like, hey, you good? You need water, this and that. People at a club will see me fall, they're like, what the fuck is this guy on? Yeah. I'm like, this guy's tweaking. I'm like, that's not the case. Like, I'm just, I'm just drunk. Like, I'm yeah, like, yeah. what are you doing today? <laughs> But that's why I like festivals a lot. So like when I go to clubs, like I think everyone's a regular now. Yeah. I think like TikTok and social media, it kind of sucks because like raves aren't the same how it used to be. No, hundred percent. Like people like they push now, they shove, they get angry, they get agitated, they get more annoyed. And this is like pre-COVID when I'm not, I wasn't used to that. I'm used to like candy sharing. I'm used to like hitting weed from random people I don't know. Um, drinking from people I don't know, people picking me up, like, now, like, you're you're like going on. yeah, like, I think social media kind of fucked us in a way, you know, because, like, it's, I, it's a good and bad thing, yeah, it's a good and bad like, thing, like, you're seeing the, you're seeing the industry grow, but with that, you get all the outsiders coming mm-hmm. in and not trying to influence it, yeah, and then there's still good people, like, trying to teach them, like, oh, like, no, don't do that, don't, 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 don't just say, excuse me, be fucking, nice about it and like basically like ray baby and like me i was a fucking ray baby people were telling me what to tell me what to do and i would listen like, okay this is my first ray let me, let me listen let me do this so like just all the new people coming in just like be respectful you know and like and but also for our community because our community can be kind of bad sometimes too like give them time you know like we get into the first rave like it's just a back and forth you know like give them time um let them be respectful too, just like teach them the ways, you know, but don't be a dick about it. Like, and not I see them the ways. It's funny, it's like, like that's a big knock right now with the Knot Center. It's yeah. Like, the Knot Center, like, everyone used to love going there. And now, now it's, it's like, like so big, like, everyone's so people. There's so many people because so many people are going now. 
that people hate it because just like you said, pushing and shoving, like you don't know what's going on. Like people like you said, you, before you'd be able to over there drink and smoke and it'd be cool. Now you don't know what you're getting. Yeah, like so it's like funny, COVID's yeah. a big thing. Like that's why that's honestly one of the reasons I haven't gone to Coachella because like I can be kind of a germaphobe, but like to an extent, you know, like I'll fucking like I'll dab you up. I'm not like a germ yeah, germaphobe, yeah. but. I wanted to go to Coachella and then there was like a herpes outbreak of like yeah. 500,000 people. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. I never heard of a herpes outbreak or AIDS outbreak from a rave. Yeah. But from like a, like a rap. Like a festival. Yeah, like a yeah. festival like that. And yeah, so I was kind of like always cautious like down. Like even now to the day, I'm like, I don't want to share drinks with people because no. I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. That's like, a, that's a big thing for me. Yeah. Like, if I don't know you, like I'm not doing it. Yeah. Like before, like I, like I was 20, I was 19, I was like, yeah, well, like, what the fuck, you trying to blow me? Like that's cool. Like let me smoke. Do you want some of my my drink with me? Do you want some of this? Like that's how it was before. Because honestly, I wasn't thinking. But then that happened. And I'm like, what's well, not great? So like, well, even uh, so now like, this is I've had I've talked to a couple of my friends and more so girls and like at festivals and then at clubs too. Like now, like. People are getting these drinks and they're pinched into it. And it's oh like, yeah, that's that that's honestly really scary. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think that's a so. I, it's more of a thing for yeah, sure. Yeah, but it's like, happening sure. at festivals now too. I didn't know that about festivals. Like, yeah, to be honest, that's crazy. I had yeah. no idea, but I got my drinks like, and I don't know because. Yeah. Um, it was in, it was actually in fucking downtown Redlands at the. That's no, that's actually really common. So really? uh, last time I went down there, it was probably like a month ago. Yeah. Um, went out with a couple of my friends, and then the two of the girls uh, got drinks down there. One of them uh, literally woke up the next day and remember like half the night. That's so like, that's what yeah. happened to me. It was at the underground. Yeah. Uh, the one up top. Yeah, the the yeah, yeah. 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 So I went there with DJ and this girl bought me a drink, or this girl had a drink, and she gave it to me. So like, oh, some guy bought it for me, but like. I don't want to drink it like you did really good. Uh, do, you, do you want it? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, turn out yeah. fucking drink. Like, that's awesome. Last thing I remember from that night. Yeah. But people weren't telling me I was being a dick or anything. Like, they, they said I didn't even look like I was drunk. I'm like, no, bro, I don't remember. Yeah. That. I don't remember how I got home. Like, yeah. I don't know. So I'm like, did I get spiked? Because that was the only drink I had. Yeah, the only same thing. I think she only had like one or two drinks. Yeah. Like, she's like, I wouldn't have felt like that for one or two drinks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not a lightweight. I mean, I probably am now because I don't drink as much as I used to. But like back then, I was always drinking liquor. I wasn't a lightweight. I'm like, that did not just happen to me off one drink. Like, no. Like, someone spiked my drink. Honestly, like, I let it come and let it go, but it's because I'm a guy, you know. I'm like, yeah. well, at least I made it home. But like, for girls, it's like, it's really sensitive. It's really no, bad. Like, it's like, you know what the intention of that yeah, is. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm good, you know. But like, for girls, like, I think we just gotta. Even at, oh my god, I heard at Heart Summit, it was like the worst, like, sexual, um, event, or like, people were taking the worst sexual measures, like, people were getting their ass grabbed. My friend thought that our girls are getting their ass grabbed, like, <laughs> they getting touched on, like, <laughs> a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of my girl, my friends that are girls, I went to the raid, told me that they got grabbed, like, Heart Summit is probably like, the worst raid. LA. Yeah, that's LA, that's what I'm saying, it's LA, like. That's the thing that people have learned about hard summer too. It's like hard summer. It's like much of it. And much of it is a rave. It's a, at the music festival in the sense of like you're gonna have all types of different people there. Because right literally there. every time I go to hard summer, I always get in a fight. Yeah, I always get in a fight. Um, the first time some guy pushed like he shoved me. You know, I was like, oh, it's whatever. Like I don't care. But I was with someone at the time, and he fucking shoved her. And I'm like, yo, ain't no fucking way. And that's when I turned and I pushed him and like he fell and I was like, a, I wasn't even thinking, I probably shouldn't have done that as well. I saw him red because this is my girl, you know, why, why are you pushing her? Yeah. It was like from two years or like a year ago, two years ago. And then uh, his friends are like, oh, it's his first raid, he doesn't know. I'm like, well, you guys better teach me. Like, that's the thing, like it just goes in circles. Like, yeah. teach him, don't just, don't, sometimes people have to learn, you know, like, oh, but the simple excuse me, that's all it is for me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the simple, simple it's like, like, I'm getting like, by, I'm yeah. getting out of here. Like, honestly, for some people, if I tell you that fence is electric, you're not going to fucking listen to me until you go touch it and then you shock yourself. Like, oh, damn, that, now I learned. Yeah. So I think, like, now everyone needs, I feel like everyone needs a lesson now before, like, understanding, but, like, it doesn't have to be that way. Like, that's, that's, not, that's, not that's respectful, that's what, you know? That, that, 
that's what we never want. I mean, it's especially for our our group. You know, I I've always be the one. You know, it's especially because I I work security. So yeah, so yeah, like my yeah. Mind, my mind's always just in that protective mode. But just over the years, I've had to tell people, look, we're all crowded. I know I'm gonna get bummed you know, no yeah. matter what. So that's the biggest thing for me, and especially for men. For the little girls, but but like for the women, both of me, I'm not worried about. Yeah, it. yeah, it's not the time. Me, I'm okay, it's okay, bro. Is that the time you know that, that they want to go up front? They're like that, yeah, yeah. But but like men, especially me, if you're gonna bump me, just say excuse me. Yeah, I know it's crowded. Who cares? There's just re- respected mannerisms that that, that are at festivals, raves, etc. That, that 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 we have to instill and keep. But of course, we, we know what's going on. You get the youngins that it's the first time. But popping they're excited. Yeah, they're excited. You, you, you excited. know, they're, they're popping M and M's. They're popping their little candy. Mm-hmm. They're they're, yeah. they're jumping and bumping, and, and it's like when you have friends that don't tell them they look. When you pop this and you're feeling right, buddy, you gotta be respectful. You're gonna be respectful. We're gonna stay here. We're not gonna let you walk off and go fucking la la land. Yeah. But like I said, but but that's where. For people going, especially women, I was always tell them this: get you some people that have been erased, especially guys that, 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 that are actually cool with you, that they you know you can go with as a group Drug, or whatever, yeah. just so you have people there. Because then, then nowadays, there's a lot of men I I, I don't trust, and, 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 and like I said, and this is just me personally. Like I said, being a guy, I feel like as the years have gone on, like I said, my. My my gay my gay counterparts or whatever, even they begin handsy. I mean, if you look at a, a lot of our episodes, literally from escape, from anywhere, even we're getting touched. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's why I, I always I highlight to people if it's like if you're seeing the men get touched by other men, you know, women touching me. Yeah, yeah I don't care. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, you can touch my back. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Touch this and you can grab me. Yeah, I don't care. You know, I don't care. I have a photo. I have a photo of Shallow. And this girl's like trying to use him to get on someone's shoulders. Oh, like, I have not look at me. Honestly, like I have that happened to me a lot. I have a girlfriend on my shoulder, like, but like people sometimes they ask sometimes they don't ask. But either way, I still fucking go ahead. Like do your shit, you know. Like go ahead, get that shoulder right, you know. Like yeah. but like lately I've, I've been getting like excuse me, oh um, can I get a shoulder right? Oh can I use your shoulder so I can get up on the ground? Like yeah, go ahead. Like, what, like, do you think? I have been a hard I was like, nah. <laughs> no. I don't know you like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to give a girl a shoulder, right? <laughs> at that moment, <laughs> she had some other people giving her the shoulder. No, back. she did not. I was, I tried to hand this off. I was like, you see him right there? Go talk to him. And he ran away. <laughs> uh, but like, I think that, that was like Skrillex or something. No, that was, uh. Wait, so you guys, watch you guys went to our summer? Yeah, yeah, we did. So, okay, how was it? That was an experience. You guys, you guys are like still getting touched, like even well, at the moment. I, I got touched once. Okay. I, I got touched once. It was in line. I know the culprit. The culprit saw me. Yeah, yeah. He was he was slick with it too. He touched my hand, little slippery bastard. But yeah, yeah. You know he, he he gave me a light touch. Um, but after that, like I said, after that, to be honest, our experience, heart summer was amazing. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, the the people were still good. Like I said, for those mixed ones, kind of like the Coachellas of the world and everything, Coachella to me is just really, really like that that clout festival. Yeah, like, like, oh, like, like, oh, I went to Coachella. Like, you know, it's something to brag about. They know? come for fashion. You know, a lot of women, a lot of people, you know, they dress up, look good. They're going to take a picture by the little circle thingy. Um, and, 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 like, I get that part. Hard, the hard summers of the world and everything, you know, you're going to get your rap people, people that are just coming in, you know what I'm saying, just to drink, get drunk. I don't give a fuck. You, if you bump me, then that's a problem. You're gonna get those people, yeah. but I feel like for a lot of these events, I would always say that there's more good than bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of good people. Like I said, I was handing stuff out to, to women. You know, my biggest question, uh, surprisingly, from from a lot of the women, you know, we were at those popsicles uh, that that they're giving out for free. Oh, I don't know why. I was, I was like, 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 like a lot of these women weren't even concerned. Or like, oh, like, what is this? Or they're like, is this dairy? And I was just like. Popsicle. Uh, 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 you mean the like uh, the, le- the electrolyte popsicle? No, so hard summer like they were giving out like hard summer ice cream for free for free, so free online. online. Yeah, so like we had I think we got an extra one because there was like what four of us. Was it like an alcohol one or like no? But no, just, just what we did was uh, we had the little beatboxes and we had the slushies, so I dipped my my ice cream in the beatbox yeah. and I made like a little alcohol like <laughs> ice cream. That was fire. <laughs> hard summer activity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say that. 
<laughs> Let's just say that. But yeah, brother, that's that was our experience. Great time. People were there. Um, yeah, it was a cool time. That was like my favorite hard that I've been to in a while. And then, um, so me here, so like I said, we, we talked about DJ upbringing. We talked to you about, you know, some of the things you posted, but I, I really want to get into that more in regards to what you posted and, and then maybe do you have any future plans as well? Um, so, so the things that, that, that you posted, you said you post things in your backyard or, or whatever, where else have you posted events at, you know? Um, so I, I've done the backyard and mostly just like places out in the desert and like with the clubs opening up, like I said, like people were like not really going to the desert rave anymore. So we had through in our last one probably like three years ago and this one gloves were like open open now so all right let's, let's do it let's give one a shot and i think it definitely changed like we only got maybe 150 people out that night mm -hmm. and that that's what we kind of talked about it well we're spending all this money we're getting the speakers we're paying the djs like is it really like worth it for us you know because like before every dj is like oh yeah i'm down so i like, do it for free like that's that's like where some the underground is like there was a lot of underground that I was doing for free because like obviously I'm a new DJ like I'm not getting chased out but why would I want a payment like my your payment that you're putting is putting me on that's the payment like you're putting me in front of all these people that don't know me at the end of the set they're getting my Instagram like that that was a payment for me you know like I love that I love really meeting new people you know but like as it was coming, people were asking for money and this and that, so it was just like kind of hard to keep up with it, you know. I was, yeah, I was putting, I was, there was even points where Persona was putting his own money, I was putting his own money. My friend himself was putting his own money just to like run this event, and we sat down and talked about it like, maybe this is not the move for now. We, we always talked about coming back to it. There was a couple events where we threw, we threw an event at the underground, um, and the events we used to run as was Kami events. It would be K A M I. It would be Kami events. So that's what we used to call ourselves. You know. Okay. Um, that's cool. Yeah, it was just like a little name. It was a sub. It was me and Fran thought of it. It was a word in Japanese, and I can't fucking think about it right now. Um, it, was, it was it was something events, and I uh, like we. It was it was just hard to maintain. So we we honestly couldn't keep up with it because everyone wanted to get paid. Everyone wanted to get money at that time. Like yeah. like I respect that. Like get your money and everything. Like. I get that you want to get paid and everything, like, so I respect that, so yeah. why? So you I, can't go broke. Yeah, 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 I can't go broke, yeah. I can't be putting a lot of my own money on the line, so that's why I kind of, like, took a step back and stopped doing that. Like, I run one in a, I run within a, with a collective now, but lately I've been on my own shit, like, I've been deep, I've been, like, this whole summer, I've been getting booked, like, crazy. That's dope, bro. That's yeah. Good. That's a season for you. Like, yeah, like, summer, like summer, summer broke, yeah, summer is a season, and, like, even uh, next week, the 26th, I have my biggest show I ever I saw that. Yeah, uh, um, the warehouse show. The 1720 right. show. Like, I think that that is for sure a milestone moment because I would go when everything started opening up. I was telling you I'm getting into clubs, like finally, like getting into clubs. You know, I was like excited. Mm -hmm. Those are one. That was one of the venue, the 1720 warehouse that just stuck with me. I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna fucking play here. So this might be a small world. Okay? Yeah, this might be a very very small world. I was with my boy last night, and uh, he was talking about. So it's next Saturday. Okay, because my boy was talking about how he might go to the show next Saturday for like a local DJ that's coming up in LA. So your show might be. It. I got to talk to Emar about that. Well, I don't. Was... I don't think I'm an LA DJ. No, he just said local. Oh, okay, it was yeah, boy, yeah. Like it was because he. He lives in Costa Mesa, he's from here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's from here, but he was like, yeah, one of his friends' boys is doing the show in LA. Yeah. And he was like, I think he's going to go. And he asked me if I want to go. Um, and I was like, yeah, let me know details. Because I, I work that night until like 10.30. So I don't know what time you're going on. Um, unfortunately, they do have me on at 8. I'm opening. Oh, okay, yeah. But I'm going to try to be the best opener I they ever like had like I'm gonna I'm a throw down like sometimes when you're an opener people are like oh well just play like chill music like I have so many like clubs tell me oh and people tell me oh you're an opener don't do too much and before like honestly when I was coming out I'm like okay, let me get in my box and fucking kiss ass but at the time they'd be like oh like you're an opener don't do too much I'm like, what the fuck I'm gonna do what I want now you know yeah. not in a kind of way like ways just 
I don't like that. Like you're telling me not to be myself. Don't, don't confine me. Like yeah. I, how, how do I blow up if you're not gonna let me do it? Exactly. I mean. Like that's what, that's why I was kind of in the battle with. Oh, I don't play what I want because like, like it's like telling me to be who I want. Like tell me to be someone else and I want to be myself. You know. But then like I understood and everything. But even now I'm like I'm, I'm gonna play bass. I was like. People that are coming, that are booking me, um, there was sometimes they didn't know I also play bass house. They thought I was just a Latin house DJ, but no, I'm, I'm a bass house DJ. I play Latin house music, but my bass house DJ. But yeah, that's this is honestly my biggest show, the biggest stage. I'm getting taped, and like a year and a half ago, two years ago, I was telling my my best friend Chris, I'm like, yo, like I don't know how I want to play here. Like I want to play here so bad. And then Inertia and Rave Hub and Good Society, they, uh, Inertia DM me, he's like, yo, I have a show for you. And Inertia is like a big, um, like a I've big, heard, yeah, 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 a big collective. Yeah. And uh, look, it's not pretty, but we want you, like, they've been seeing what I've been doing, you know? Um, they're like, it's not, it's not like a good time, but it's, we, we have you opening at eight, but if you do good, like if, it goes good and everything. We want to bring you back. They didn't give me no ticket amount, how much I have to sell or anything like that. But I sent them a mix and they liked it. And um, a lot of the big places I get to DJ at, um, it's post. Like, oh, time we do this post. Even there's a San Diego one that I just posted. The, I looked at the comments and so far I'm the most tagged. And hopefully that I hope that goes good. But uh, yeah, but it's like. Well, I don't want to get too hyped, you know, but like, I hope that goes good. But like, with inertia, like, they told me, like, oh, okay, we have the saw, it's not pretty, but it's like, hey, and if everything goes good, like, we want to bring you on for another show. But besides that, we want you to meet our people. We want you to get, like, familiar, like, basically get familiar with the people. And they said something, like, around that. I'm like, yo, have they been, like, watching me or something like that? Like, a lot of people been yeah, watching much. my story that I don't know. And I think that's, that's cool. Um, even uh, the event, like I said, the event from San Diego, they watched a uh, shipwreck, shipwreck. They watched my story when I posted it, and like, I think that's cool, you know. Like, I think that's a little cool, but like, you never know who's watching. Yeah, you don't, you never know who's watching. That's why, like, be you, like, just be you, basically. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm excited for that show. That's dope, bro. I'm excited for you. That's dope. Like I said, small world. Not really. yeah. I'm like eighty percent sure. Like that's probably what it is. That's what it is when he was talking to me about it. And I'm just like, that's dope. I wish I could go see you. Bro. No, man, you're good, bro. Even just a thought, bro. Like, yeah. like I said, I'm not really big on like. I'm not gonna get mad if you don't come on my show. You know, like that's why I would tell. That's, uh, one thing I will say is, um, like, if you ever have a post, like, you need like a, like a like, tap. That's what that's what people don't understand. Yeah. Like, I fucking love that. Like, okay, yeah. if you can't make it to the show, like, understand. Even if you just like share it, like, I appreciate that so much, and I love that. Like, that to me is like so much, so, so much love. Like, oh, this local IE DJ is coming to LA and taking this big ass stage, the biggest warehouse in LA. And he's taking the stage like that's dope. If you can't go, it, like if you share it, and I see that like no, we'll, we'll do that too. On Monday, yeah, like, on Monday we'll, we'll share the we'll share like your posts on it because then we're having the guests on it. But yeah, you, if, you, if you get any shows or anything like that, like we're using people to tag you on it, bro. Let us know if you got some. Man. Yeah, I, I love that so much because like you're helping like a community, like you're yeah. helping someone. Like I said, this is why I'm going back and forth. I feel like I still have so much work to do. Like I still oh, yeah. have so much. It's work a journey, to do. bro. Yeah, that's it's a journey. journey. But then. Like you're doing this, this small little favor to me. Like people consider it small. People can consider, oh, like I'm gonna share it, but stupid, what's it gonna do? Like that's your thought. For me, it's the fucking world that you do that. No, it's like, love. That's yeah, love, right? That's, like I love it so much. Like yeah. a little share, like this people, putting me yeah. out there. Like I love that so much. People don't realize, like especially like when you work for yourself, like when you're like you're doing everything like you're for yourself, like on that, and I'm like how much like it's, it's affirmation yeah the fact that like hey you like this or hey you shared this and you, know, you put this on like you like you you took time to go and like try to put me on yeah like it doesn't matter what the result is the fact that you did that for me just me it's real like, really yeah, like i don't even mind. care because like obviously i care if these people come to the show but they're sharing yeah that that means the world to me yeah it's I a gratification yeah i don't it's like i don't expect like much you know because like I did a lot of stuff on my own, you know, like, I feel like when I was going out to clubs, I was like, oh, like, 
literally every time I go to the club, hi, I'm Gatsby, like I do this, I'll send you a mix, hi, I'm Gatsby, I do this, I'm a straight mix, I play bass, off, I do this, I do that. And like for a long time, I was doing that, I still do that as much as I can now, because I had a lot of free time before, you know, and I, like at the time I was like, oh, let me fucking spend money, I don't care, but now like I, I pay rent now, I have a car, like I, it's just like responsibilities that I have now, so I can't go out to clubs as much as I want to. And even when I do, like, I'm kind of, like, tired, or this, or that, but I'm like, no, like, it can't be excuses. I, I, I want to put myself out there, like, more again. And I have been, like, like I said, this whole month, I've just been booked for shows. Even even this month, um, I had a couple people reach out to me that want me to play for them. I'm like, honestly, like, I'm not going to do that. I'm really focusing on this show. Like, this is a big show for me. I think I, I want to at least, like, sell 15 to 20 tickets. And even... Uh, yeah. Next week, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. Like, just giving away two tickets. Oh, that's dope. But, like, I, I have no guesses for this. Oh, no, no guesses. Really? No, I have no guesses. So, like, the tickets that I'm gonna give away are coming out of my pocket. Just yeah, like, man. like yeah. I want people who know me or don't know me to win this and come to my show and see me. That's play. dope, man. Like, even yeah. if you don't, like, obviously it's at 8 o'clock. You, you can't make it at that time. Just show up, you know? Like, just show up, like, and I don't care, like, if I see you, like, I see you, you know? But that's what I'm going to do next week. I'm going to um, do, like, a raffle, but I have to pay for the tickets. Like, it just, it's going to help me in the long run, you know? So yeah. I'm thinking about, yeah, I'm spending my money, but it's going to help me, you know? It's going to see, let... That's an investment. Yeah, that's, 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 that's how spending money is an investment. Like, I want to show these people what an IE DJ can do, you know? Because, like... A lot of IE DJs get shit on. Like, I'm, I'm going to say it out here. Like, no, a, lot, a lot of yeah. IEs don't get their DJs, DJs don't get their respect. Like, there's a an upcoming crew called Disconnected. Shout out boy Carlos. He's running that shit with him and his friends. They threw a pool party, and that shit was amazing. Like, I think I heard about this. So I, I, I even asked him, "Hey, I just fucking did it to do it because like that's just respect, you know? Like, I could have been like, oh, like, well, you're gonna book me. I want like 150 dollars, 200 dollars. Like, no, I'm not gonna like. He's like, hey, do you want to play? I'm like, yeah. Like, don't eat, like. I'm not gonna do this shit for no payment. I'm doing this shit for fun. Like, like you guys, I see what you guys are doing, and I have respect. When that shit happened, like, that party was fucking cool. Yeah, like, really. it, it was good. It was a good fucking cool party. Like, I met a lot of people too, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, like you're Gatsby, right?" Uh, honestly, like I got really drunk that night. <laughs> really drunk. Cause I, so it was a good party. Though. It was a good party. It was a good party. So was a good party. I, didn't, I, didn't I didn't eat. I was just like, sometimes when there's shows, like, even to this day, like, like people put me on this pedestal, and like, bro, like, take me off a little bit, you know, like, not a fucking god, you know, but like, sometimes, like, I'm like, you know what, maybe I am a god sometimes, like, if I'm not, you know, but like, people are like, oh, like, you killed it, like, when I got to that party, everyone's like, yo, you're Gatsby, like, we came here to see you, like, we seen you throw down, like, we can't wait for your set, this and this and that, like, you're Gatsby, we heard of you, like, we want to see you. That's tiny. So obviously when I got there, I got a little loser type. Like, every time I have, like, a show, like, before I used to get nervous, I'm like, fuck, I'm going up there. Like, I, even to this day, like, I'm like, damn, like, I'm kind of nervous. Like, I think that's just how it is. It's okay to get nervous, you know what I'm trying to say. But, like, anyway, I got really drunk, and before I hopped on the mic, um, they were just connecting everything. They were putting me on, whatever. I put my USB in. Uh, I turned on the mic, I'm like, yo, like... I was like, fuck what that. I was drunk. And my friend took a video of me. I'm like, bro, I don't remember saying that. I guess I hopped on the mic. I'm like, yo, to all the guys that brought their girlfriend to this party, I apologize in advance because you're never going to see more ass shit in your entire <laughs> life. And there was this girl, these two girls, like, looking at each other, like, oh, like he just said that. And the guys were just laughing. Like, I saw it. Like, I was like, damn, I really said that? Like, fuck. And then yeah, I had a good set. Like, it was happening and shit. Like, it was fun, and then like when I got off, people were like, bro, you did that? And, like, what's your like? People who didn't know who I was, they're like, oh, what's your name? I'm like, oh, I'm Gatsby, and they're like, what? You? I I heard you before. I'm like, ah, like that's so cool. It's so cool. That's so cool. But yeah, I for sure got drunk that night. I that was fun. It was fun. I had fun. Cool. I had fun. Cool, I, had fun. I just I'm like, damn, I really said that shit. Yeah. Like that said some out of pocket shit. And I'm like, what else do I say? Dude, I, but that's the thing about love about the DJs that do that. We're like. They, they were like into like this is what I'll say like I I really like there's some DJs like I had this competition with Shadow with my boy Eric like there's some DJs that like 
they can't produce great, like they're they're okay producers, mm -hmm. but they know how to do a live performance. Yeah, know, they know how to be like very personable. Like they know how to read a crowd. They know how to play to a crowd. Be personal with the crowd. And I love those DJs because like if you're on a good one and they're on a good one, like it makes it so much more fun. Literally, I had people tell me like. I I hate when people feed my ego, but then I like I love it at the same time, you know, like I had people come up to me like when I when I when I have a haircut, my hair is like, everywhere right now, so that's all I'm wearing to have. But when I have a haircut, people are like, bro, you look like Machoda. I'm like, ah stop. <laughs> 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 all right, now you're doing too much. Now you're doing too much. And then people are like, bro, when you're out there, your energy's like like crazy, like because you know, like people get on the DJ and like they get on, you know, like they just hop on that's a job. Yeah. You know, when I do it, I'm like that's not a fucking job. That's, a, that's fun right there. So, like, I hop on and I just fucking, like, my body, like, that's, what, that's why a lot of people fuck with me how I DJ. Because now, all the time, there's a song, uh, I forgot what it's called, but every time I play it, I jump on, like, I jump on the stage and stand on the stage. Like, um, like if there's a table, I'll stand on the table and I'll fucking, like, I'll, like, people love my crowd or my DJ presence, because I'm yeah. always interacting with the crowd, like, I'm always telling people, like, I'll call y'all, I'm like, there's one time I was at Mezcal, I'm like, damn, why is everyone sitting down, and I'm throwing down right now, like, yeah. I want to get people to dance, like, people would tell me, oh, like, oh, that was kind of me talking, I'm like, no, like, no. Yeah, I don't know if it was, like, I didn't see, like, I was like, no, I was just trying to get people to, like, oh, you want to get them to dance, you, you know, dance. like, you're at a club, why are you sitting down, first yeah. of all, like, you came to the club to sit down, like, yeah. you know, like, get to the club, shake some ass, Get some drinks with your guy friends and like just have fun, you know. So that's why I'm like, yo, so I was like, why everyone sitting down? Like everyone get up, and then people, I had people talk shit about my my stage presence with with such, you know. Like I had friends who are kind of like that's where it comes and goes. Like I had some friends who like they don't like that I do that. Like, they talk shit about my stage presence. And I'm like, bro, like, they're, they're basically hating me, you yeah. know? I'm like, bro, like, there's some people telling me, like, oh, um, one of my friends told me, oh, he's talking shit about you. And I press them, but not press them, but I'm like, yo, like, don't talk about Gatsby like that. Like, it's like, it's a it's a character you put on, you know? Like, yeah. Like, like to this day, a lot of people don't know my real name. And I keep it like that. Like, That's cool. That's I don't, cool. I don't, yeah. I don't it's it's kind of like not more respect things because I honestly just hate my fucking name, you know. Mm. Like I hate my name. Like it's so basic, and I think for a long time I was hiding who I was, like who I really am. And I still do that to this day. But I, I don't like my my name, and that's like hiding my character. So when I go up stage and play this character, like this is Gaffney, this is me, this is me having fun, this is me letting loose, this is me up stage, not worrying about no fucking bills, no rent, no car payment. Nothing, just fun, yeah. me doing me, and to see some people hate on that, like, I'm like, bro, why are you hating? Like, I'm just having fun. Let me have fun. And like, there's friends who I thought were friends, and they hate on me for like being me, and like, and the, I think the honesty in that is a, <sighs> this is very like, because this is everywhere. We're like, this is not just someone's gonna be jealous. Yeah, but like, everyone's always like, uh, this is the thing, like. Have you ever been in a room where like there's a person there that's super funny, that's super engaging, and like, everyone's fucking gravitating for them, and you have people on the side that are just shitting on them? Yes, yeah. they're not getting that attention. They're exactly. not getting that. That's, yeah. that's what it. That's what it is, and it yeah. sucks. Like I don't do that. Like I did that one time, and it's because when I went up there to play, this happened in Riverside. When the guy was like, "Oh, why the fuck are you playing that?" And then when they went up there, I'm like. Man, why are they talking shit about me? They're trash too. And then Persona's like, bro, like, let them talk shit, but we're not gonna be with people. Yeah. Like, I like people who fucking check me, you know? Yeah. I don't like kiss ass people. I never like kiss ass people. Like, check, like, check the fuck out of me. Tell me if, like, if my set sucked. Tell me if I messed up. Like, I love that. I love honest people. And Persona is like, yo, bro, we're not gonna do that. He literally stopped me. He's like, that was us up there. We gotta give them respect. Like, how they gave us respect. Yeah. They might have not get it, but I'm just like, yeah, they talk shit, but we're not gonna be like, yeah. we're gonna be us. Like, I'm like, you're right, bro. Like, thank you. Honestly, like, thank you for checking me because, like, I needed that. Like, That's it's good. good. Yeah. Like, that, those are your real friends. That like, is, I'm not no saying. fucking yes man. I'm not no kiss ass. I'm never gonna fucking do that. Like, mm -hmm. if there's something I don't like, if you mess up, I'll tell you, like, hey, you messed up, but that's okay. That's an improvement. You can work on that. I'm um, like, that's why, that's how I am with my friends. Like, 
with me, like I'm blunt. And sometimes I can be very blunt and it can sometimes be hurtful and I don't mean to be, it's just like the way I thought, like, yo, like, you could have done better, but like, I, I improved on that, I'm like, yo, like, you messed up this, but like, the whole set was amazing. That's how I thought now before, I'm like, they're like, oh, uh, how was my set? But like, honestly, bro, it was okay. But now I'm like, no, like, I just didn't want to kiss their ass, you know, I want to be, yeah. I want to be that friend who tells them the truth, like, oh, like, I know they're on their high right now, like, oh, I have a good set, and I'm like, yeah, well, like, I'm not going to fucking do that, like, I'm not going to do that. I did that before, but that was when I was kind of, like, younger, but now I'm like, yo, like, it's just this that you got to work on, like, I don't know, I, I'm just, like, an honest person, so I, I, think, want, I would want people to be honest with me, you know? I think we're, like, I just write it on, I appreciate constructive people. Yeah, I so love like, constructive criticism, like, yeah. I love criticism so much, I, I yeah. take that to heart, like, but like, a lot of people shit on me, like they shit on me, then it's like, bro, okay, what are you really trying to do? Yeah, yeah, you're sh- yeah. there's a difference between shitting on me and criticism. Yeah. Like, criticizing, yeah, tell me if I'm doing this on, but to shit on me, like, yo, like, he's whack for, like, doing that. Like, whack for what? I'm having fun. Like, yeah, it's just like, it sucks, like, hearing people that you thought were your friends or you looked up to, like, yo, like, cut that out. Like, that's weird. Like, that, that sucks. You know? yeah, yeah, I'm not going through it. Uh, like, uh, I'll go just say one uh, one thing, and just I'll say like, I'm gonna go like, you're doing you. Yeah, just do you. Like, like, honestly, fuck these people who. I pray for them. Yeah, I'm just like you know what? I, I, never, go, I never go on your life. I pray for you. You know, like, yeah. you can talk to you about me, but whatever you're going through, don't bring that on this side. You know, like I pray for you. Like, there's sometimes like I'm going through it, and I can't really show the people I'm going through it because like, they don't. Like, honestly, like to be honest, they don't want to see that. You no. Know? They see you as this person who they come to see DJ and everything. Like before, um, and that just goes with mental health. You know, I, I'm usually closed off to what I'm going through. I I go through that shit. I used to go through stuff by myself, but that's why I open up to like the girl I'm talking to, to my friends. Like I tell them what's going on, but I don't post that to social media. Like yeah. I, I don't do that to no, social media. Same. Because people people like. People don't care. Yeah, people, people don't care. care. They, they don't care. care at the end of the day. Honestly, especially being a man, like people yeah. do not care. But when you have those friends that you can talk to and sit down with, I think that's no, that's a beautiful thing. Like yeah, I, I, I tell this that. all the time. Like in the past, like three or four months, I had so much personal shit going on, and not once have I been like, oh, like poor me on social media or anything like that. But you know what's keeping me grounded? It's my friend. Just having like him and our other Matt, uh, our friend Matt, on there to be able to talk shit through. Having other friends I can talk to where just like. I'm working through it. I'm not putting it all in and just internalizing it myself. I'm working through it, but I'm also not letting it define me. Being like, "Oh yeah, poor me right now." Like, "Oh, am I this up?" Or like, "Oh, why is this happening to me?" Mm-hmm. It's just kind of keeping that ground possible, like getting it out, working through it, and then going about what you have to do. Yeah, we have to do yeah. that. I think um, at first, like before, I used to take my anger and like my depression and everybody out on everybody, but like no, like can't do that, like, that's, that's bad, like, I gotta, yeah. I gotta work through it, but then, like, I got so used to working through stuff on my own, like, when people put out a hand, I'm like, what are you, what are you doing, like, yeah. I got, I didn't understand, I still have a hard time with this, yeah, I, don't I, know yeah. I, I still have a hard time with yeah, that. like, even when I'm getting to know, like, person, even my close friends, like, I confide in to Persona, to my boy, and stuff, to my boy, my boy, Chris, um, to, like, my other friend, like certain people, I know who to confide in. Like, yeah, I know who won't. You know your circle. Is. Yeah, I know who my circle is getting smaller. It is. Gotta say, it, is. It, get, it gets smaller, but like that's where you see people come and go. Like some people are here to just kiss your ass. Like I can tell when people kiss my ass. Yeah, I can tell, and like I'll be looking at them like, don't kiss my ass. And I'm like, there's there's a difference when like people are coming like, yo, yeah. Set this and this and that, like I love that, and people are like, yo, I'm like, yeah, great set, oh, like, like, it's just like a way how you go about it, you know. But, like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, my bad, like, I started off from the question, no, but, like, no, no, like, no, no, but yeah, like, it, it just sucks to have everyone's gonna be jealous, like, mm-hmm. and just like fucking J. Cole's song, like, love yours, you're not gonna really appreciate the shit until you appreciate yours, and like, I think that hits hard. Because everyone's, someone's gonna be jealous. Someone's gonna hate. Yeah. You're not gonna make everyone happy. That's you're not gonna make everyone happy. happy. Like I'm not a people pleaser. You know. Yeah. Like when it comes to, I'm not like I said, I'm not gonna kiss your ass. I don't know how many times I said that on this podcast, but I'm not gonna kiss. No, your that's gonna be episode title. <laughs> <laughs> but, yep. but yeah, like 
I like real people. Just I feel be, like real, be real with me. Be fucking real. No matter how much it hurts me, if it hurts my ego, hurt it. Be real with me. That's mm-hmm. all I want people to do is be real with me. Like, if, I had a, if I had an okay set, tell me I had an okay set. Don't be like, yo, we got a great fucking set. Like, no, I'm like, yo, I'm going to swap off the yeah, yeah. drinks. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I'm <laughs> like, yeah, my guy. You know, I'm like, yeah, my guy. Like, like, be real with me. Like, that's how I am with all my friends. Like, they ask me, oh, how did I do? I'm like, honestly, like, you did really good. Like, you did better than before. Like, you messed up on this on transition, but you did. Like, your set was so fucking amazing. That's dope. Like, like, that. like I, I like, like, my boy Andre. Oh, my God. You did that on a land house set. We went to the OC Circle. That was the first time I ever played, heard him play a record phone. And he went off. Oh, no. I love that. He went off. Like, he, he, he did good. He, he went off. Amazing. I love that, brother. So I actually have a quick question. Um, so in in regards to like the mentality of, of a DJ, you know, tell me those unknown stresses that people don't talk about. Oh, that are man, I'm about to snitch out. I'm about to snitch all the DJs out. Nah, but it's not even that. Like, um, no snitch, I don't snitch. There you go. But like, the stitches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, DJs, they go through it because like, I'm a DJ and I'm going to do it. Like, I'm not only a DJ, like, I don't consider myself just a DJ because I produce now. I make yeah. music, I draw my own stuff. So I consider myself an artist. Like, I know I'm not big, but I still, that's why I consider myself. I make my own music, I produce, but I don't do it by myself. I have help. Like, my, my teacher at Star Vessel, he helps me with my music. And shout out to him. He helps me with my music. He, um, he tells me what to do. He tells me what sounds better. He, he just helps me. You know, he's a, he's a good, he's my teacher. He taught me how to make music. Like yeah. I started learning music when I was he started teaching me music when I was like twenty, but I didn't drop a song until I turned um twenty three, I think. Twenty no twenty two or twenty three. I didn't drop a song because I was I wanted to I was a perfectionist at first. I wanted everything to be fucking perfect. But it doesn't have to be if it's like dropping, you know, but like a bunch of a bunch of DJs like they go through it because, like, it's like, honestly, being a DJ is a lot of money. Like, yeah, you're getting stuff in return, but, like, the gas. Like, there's some there's some DJs out there who show off, like, oh, like, oh, I have this, I have money, but reality, like, it's, it's not, you know, like, we have to spend money on gas, we have to take our time. Sometimes when we go to gigs, we don't get paid. Like I said, like, we, we put on this front when we get on stage. That's a front, like. Sometimes that's it's not. Character. That's a character. It's a character that we play. It's a. It's a whole. It's a role we're acting in. Like that's why when we're up there, we feel so good. We love the energy. We love sending people put their hands up, taking videos. We just love it so much because it distracts us from when we get off stage. I could say it's like the roles are like very similar as being like in a crowd and then being the DJ. Because most people are in the crowd to escape. From whatever the reality is there, and then sometimes, mean, yeah, so yeah, the DJ is doing yeah. the same thing. The DJ is doing the same fucking thing, man. Like, there's sometimes where I'm just fucking going through it. I'm like, damn, like, do I? Like, there's times when I have to DJ the same thing. I'm like, I don't want to fucking DJ. Like, but there's people that bought tickets to go see you, go see you DJ, and then when I go in there, I see the crowd. I'm like, these, these people don't know who I am, and they will, or these people are here for me, you know? Yeah. But, so when I get up stage, like. My world is the sun is shining, you know. Yeah, the, the world right. is I think no long, is no longer gray. Like seeing you record me, say yes, be just hearing that. Like I appreciate it so yeah. much. It's like, love. It's love. We're going through it. Like as much as you're going through it, being in the crowd, the fact you came out here tonight for that DJ. If you came, if you came to see four B, if you came to see AC Slater, like. From going to the crowd to being a DJ, like it's it's the same thing. This is this is what I hate too. This is what I fucking hate when DJs say, "Oh, it's hard." It is not fucking hard to be a DJ. You like you can be a DJ. Anyone can be a you can be a DJ. Anyone can be a DJ. It's not hard. Like there's there's people that I'm teaching how to be a DJ. It's it's really not that hard. It's just there's some DJs that are dicks about it. You know, the only thing it does take is time, time and money. I'll for sure say that, but like, yeah, that character when we go up there and play, or sometimes we are, is to distract ourselves from like the real world, like I said, to 
fuck that bill. I'm worried about this crowd. Let me make sure I'm doing good for this crowd. Let me make sure this crowd is loving what I'm doing. And it's like, it's for sure sometimes a front. Sometimes it's not a front. You know, sometimes I go up there, I feel good. You know, mm-hmm. but some other times, like, it's a character you play. It's a, like, it's, it's, it's a character to roll. I yeah. Love I love that, you know, um, because I would consider that like an actor, I would consider that, you know, even like a singer per se, you are in the in the, you are in the entertainment industry, number one. Number two, this is a gift, this is a form of art. Yeah. You are an artist in every shape and form. Just like a painter has a brush that creates a masterpiece, that is what you do when yeah, you I like it on the tables, you feel me? Like I said, it's like you you are creating the same memories that like I said, maybe you are somebody's first taste of a rave. Yeah. You know, like I said, a lot of these DJs, what they don't understand, especially in, in like your, your position, which is so great that you have a humble mindset that you're accepting of all these things, is you got to look at it from the perspective of, okay, yes, I may not be at a, at a festival where there's 5,000 people. Maybe, maybe there's 150. But 150, I have five fans. Yeah. Every single show. Maybe I get five. Maybe, maybe I get two. Well, in a year, I, I just made over 500 people that fuck with me. Yeah. Like, like really mess with me. Not the ones that, that are just kind of standing by or that really mess with you. And those are the ones that will continue to carry you before. Because if you have 500 ones that mess with you, they're going to have about a person or two that's just going to come with them. Exactly. Like, hey, come see this new DJ, you know? And then it works that way. So like I said, man, I, I love that for you. I will applaud you for that. I appreciate you, man. And I love that, 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 that thing moving forward. I have another question. Yeah, well, go I, I was thinking about this, you know, because... Um, you see this all the time but with, with DJs when they're preparing for a set, and then and this is going to tie into the one that, that you're about to do the next week. Okay. How much truly goes into a big set? Oh like, my! Like I said, we're, we're, I'm stressing about the one that I'm making for next week. That's what I'm saying. So what? So what's the preparation that goes through that? Are you in the lab? Like, like are, are you sitting there creating this? And like, do you scratch it? Like, is there a point where you're just like, I'm gonna play this, and you're like, you know what? Nah, it doesn't. Yes, literally what you said and what it is. Because like, if I have a like, if I have like a show like I like, if I've been to Moscow, I'm like, oh well, I'm gonna just play this. Because I know the vibe. But like, I'm like, now I'm playing for like, because I played for Avalon and I was stressing about that. Like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. I think that was my. I played for Vegas. I was stressed. I played in Vegas. I was stressing about that. Like, for this, I think this is like a big stamp on my career as being a DJ. Like, the set that I have. Now, I scrapped it like three times already. Damn. Yeah, I scrapped it three times. I'm like, all right, this sounds good, but this one. And there's um, so this is how my this is exactly how my set's gonna go. I'm gonna play Latin house. I'm gonna lead into a little bit of a couple songs of techno. That techno has a high BPM. I'm gonna mix that into bass house, and it matches so perfect. And I'm gonna mix in the bass house and the tech house. So I'm gonna give you all of me, you know. Uh, the tech house or the techno is because it's like a house and techno show, so I want to fit in just a little bit, but not kiss house at the same time. My whole set is mostly bass house and night bass. AC Slater is what you're gonna hear most of the night, but like I appreciate my culture. Like I'm Mexican Filipino, you know, so I'm gonna go into the fucking Latin house. You know, I'm not. Nice. I'm not gonna fucking stray away from that. Like I said, like I was just bass house before, but like I opened up more, like a more open up DJ. But yeah, so. There's, uh, just thinking about answering your question right now is like stressing me out because like even now like I'm looking at my set I'm like, is it good? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't it's probably gonna do a couple more changes. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure we're gonna do a couple yeah. more changes because like, it's just like, there's some DJs they freestyle it. I fucking respect DJs who can fucking do that. Let's go out there and just fucking. Just fucking yeah. You know what? I don't know. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna just play with the crap. But yeah, yeah like. Before I couldn't do that, like I was stressed. I'm like, no, I gotta have this set. Now I'm like, all right, I'm gonna freestyle it until that goes. I'm gonna just go off the energy of the crowd. So when I DJ for the pool party, there was a lot of Mexican people, a lot of like um, black people and everything. So I already like knew what to play. So I play like uh, like Latin house music. I played. I knew what to play. I knew what to play. You the trap. Yeah, music. yeah. <laughs> I knew what to play. I knew what to play. So I was playing a lot of Latin music and people. I do how the crowd was gonna be. And so I played like a lot of tech house, a lot of lap house. So like I freestyle that one, but I was I am I'm pretty sure I messed up. I was drunk. I'm for sure I for sure think I messed uh, up. Yeah, okay. I for sure think I messed up for sure. But um before I didn't know how to 
freestyle, and I was always at the prep my set, and before I was like, oh, scratching the fuck, I hope this is good enough for them to want me to book again. Because that's, that's how it is, like, is it good? Like, are people dancing? And sometimes there was times where I have, like, a, a set ready, and I don't see, like, the people dancing. Just, yeah, like, just kind of okay, racing, let me yeah. switch it up. And that's why I take the initiative. So okay. you uh, armbow it. Yeah. It's like, all right, okay, this is the This isn't working, so let me switch into this. I like that. But, but like, I actually have a question, too, because I've been getting a lot of this lately. I've been hearing a lot about this. Like, techno is becoming, like, big again and amazing. Yeah. And I didn't like techno at first. I, uh, the same thing. Like, I I was cool with techno, but, like, it was never my, like, okay, I want to hear techno the entire time. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, like, why are there all these different techno? I was like, honestly, like, how I feel about techno is I think DJs, are under like understand how to play it better and mix it a lot yeah. better now. Cause like I've seen so many DJs that throw techno in there and they mix it so much better to where like you're not a trance state. Eli, Eli, Eli Brown does that shit. Eli yeah. Brown fucking he's he's an amazing artist when it comes to like techno and house like Yeah, so like how do you feel about that? Like, techno coming back. Um I feel like techno has always been there, but I don't think it's been like, appreciated as much as yeah. right now. Because like even when I DJed for the underground, like when I was doing Desert, they booked me and I know I was Bass House and it was a techno show. So that know. was my first bad experience. Oh. That was my first bad experience fucking having a guy reach like just fucking talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first experience with like real techno. Like all these DJs were playing techno. I'm like, this is gonna be weird for me to play Bass House, but this is when I have my laptop, and this is when, at the time, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna play what they want. I'm gonna play what they need. Like that was when I was on my little head high. Even I, I don't even know who the fuck I was. I don't even know why I was acting like that. But I was like, no. So I played. I went through my set. I played bass house. The crowd went fucking off. <laughs> they loved it. Like they never heard it before. Well, if you're in techno all night, I'm gonna yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, really good. Good. Techno, techno, yeah. techno can sometimes get repetitive. Yeah. I don't want to like shun it or shun DJ, but I love techno. No, sometimes it can be yeah. repetitive. Like, Latin yes. House can get repetitive, Big House can get repetitive. Anything can get repetitive if you keep fucking playing it. But, like, from hearing techno one night to hearing Big House, I was on from 11 to 12. So I wasn't even, I was on before the headliner uh, at this underground rave. Everyone went off. Like, everyone was fucking jumping. People were recording me. Like, people were dabbing me up when I was playing my set. And then when I got up, I was like, damn, I feel great. And the guy who booked me, he was like, what the fuck are you doing? Why'd you do that? I'm like, whoa, like, he came at me so weird. I'm like, yo. You booked me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, dude, this is a fucking techno show. You're playing fucking dubstep bass house. He's like, I wasn't even playing dubstep. I was playing bass house. He's like, bro, you're supposed to play techno. It's on the flyer. And I look at the flyer, and I'm like, I showed him, like, there's no fucking techno here. It doesn't say techno. It says DJ to it on it and where it's at and where the K's at and everything like that. So, like, literally when I hopped off, people, you know, when people have a good time on the set, they walk away, they take a break, get some water, blah, blah, blah. That whole crowd walked away when the hell went off on So that's why he was mad at me, but he didn't say nothing to me until after the set, because when I hopped off, he dabbed me up, but he didn't look at me. He just, he just went like this, he went like this, yeah. and dabbed me up and said, Damn. Like, the way he took my hand, yeah. he just walked on the plate. Like, he was mad because I took his crowd. But if I'm, if I'm hearing, like, if I'm hearing bass house all night and I hear Latin, Latin, I'm gonna go off. Like, yo, what the fuck is different? So of course I'm gonna go off. If I had, if I hear Latin house all night and I hear bass house, bass house music, I'm gonna go off, you know? Like, I think that's what it was. So then after that, he impressed me about it. Like, he was like, this is supposed to be a techno show. You fucked up the whole vibe. Like, but that's not your fault, bro. Yeah, like, that's not he, my fault. Like, he, but, like, he, he booked me and I knew what I played. I didn't, I honestly didn't yeah. know. I wasn't trying to show off. I just didn't know. Yeah. And then he was looking for more DJs for his next show. And he was like, yo, I'm going to be my DJ, blah, blah, blah. He puts on his story. I'm like, hey, man, I'm down the road. And he's like, no, fuck you. I'm never booking you again. Yeah. And literally that. I'm like, what, the, what did I do? That's your, like, that as a, like, a promoter or, or the like, that, that's your Yeah, fault. before, okay, honestly, like, a lot of people don't go through this. Before you go to book someone, look at their sound, yeah. look at their resume, look at what they do. Like that's why in my profile I have base house because that's who I am. Yeah. But like like I said over the years, like I do tech out. So like a lot of promoters and like people booking you, they don't know that. But like 
I guess sometimes it's on the DJ because if you know, like, it's a club, maybe you should, like, feed in a little bit and everything like that. But, like, it was an underground rave in a cave. So, like, he's like, so, I didn't think there was rules to Yeah, I didn't think there was rules. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, an underground is for no rules. And underground to me is like, there's no rules, I get to do it. One, it's, it's feral time, I'm an actor. Yeah. So like, I didn't know there was like a rule for me to play techno. So like, that's why I'm like, you know what? Like, fuck techno, fuck the techno scene. Yeah. Because like, they didn't appreciate me. Why should I appreciate well, the, them? The crowd did. Yeah, the crowd did. The crowd did. It doesn't matter. The crowd, the crowd did. appreciated yeah. me, but. Like, what I was looking for at the time was the recognition from the people that booked me. So I was like, you know what? Fuck techno. Yeah. I didn't fucking hate techno. So I stopped going to techno. Like, that was the first and last techno show I ever been to. And then um, I got brought to another techno show. Like, I was like, all right, let me, let me get into it. I started listening to techno more. And now I love it. I love techno. So I love the techno scene. So don't take this as no this. Like, I love yeah. the techno scene now. Because at the time, before when I was first shown it, like, I had, like, I was bitter about it. Yeah. Like, that's how that guy went about it. But then thinking about it to it again, I was young, so I shouldn't have played the whole time of scene for this guy's fucked yeah. up. Like, exactly. like, I'm not going to blame, like, oh, he fucked up, so I'm going to hate everyone. Like, n- like, you know, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to. Yeah, but then that yeah. genre, you, you, you feel like you know I me? Mean? Yeah. Yeah, but that's good. I feel like that's the evolution of a DJ. That's the nitty gritty work behind the scenes that a lot of people don't get because they're probably like, well, why, why doesn't this DJ play at this festival or play at here? It's because the people booking it, you just never know what goes on. You feel yeah. me? Like the guy that's booking you may have beef with you because the person that he really wants to be put on, you, you took his crowd. Or yeah. You took his well, that's going to be like putting Cascade on at fucking Lost Lands. Yeah. It's how some times brought up John Summit. And yeah. that changed, I think that changed everything because John Summit he plays techno, he plays dubstep, he plays house. Like, John Summit is doing it. Yeah, you know? the hottest one right now. Yeah, the hottest one right now is John Summit. I remember when people were like, oh, you know John Summit? I'm like, never heard of him. And now, like, I've heard of him, you know? What was, what was a full circle moment for me was I know, like, I've heard Dawson Duke before, but like, I never really followed him. So like we went and saw him at EDC this year, and like, now I've been on kind of that wave with him. He was good. What are you doing now? He was cool. That was he did back to back. He did the back. Uh, he did back to back with Subtronic. So he was a, the the uh, surprise guest. Yeah. So uh, Subtronic brought him out. They did back to back for about thirty Insane. minutes, and then he did his own set for about like an hour, and it was a fucking dope. That's it. Was it. Dope. it was beautiful. It was dope, and then we saw him at our with the back to back Cascade. That was cool. Like. This is all be honest, like a lot of it was more Cascade yeah. style, so like, I get it, Cascade's a little bit better. Like techno and trend. Yeah, like he's that. a veteran, like it's gonna be more his set. So it was cool, like not a bad set, but like I wanted a little bit more from it, but it was it was cool. But um I didn't know this. We went to Coachella last year in twenty twenty two. John Summit was there. He was there? John Summit was at Coachella twenty twenty two. Was it like a smaller stage or like it was probably the do lab. It was probably the do lab, but he was there. And I was like, damn, we didn't, like, I didn't know he, I didn't know who he was there. I didn't even, like, think to see him. And a year later, I'm just like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's through time. A lot yeah. Of, like I said, a lot of time. I like, I like that, man. And then, you know, I'm just, I'm just very excited for you for when, you know, not only for your show next weekend, that's going to be huge for you, but but I feel like you're just on a trajectory of because your foundation, you started building this foundation for now three years now with the right people, with the right crew, doing it with the right mentality, dog. I'm excited for your future. Like I said, whatever, whatever, yeah. we, whatever we can do to help, you know, promote you, promote your people. I think like, like, even you know, this podcast alone is awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. I love it. Really? It's okay. That's what we yeah. love to do. Yeah, I, I love podcasts, like I said. It's My like bad for cutting you off. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm just like really, really, like, really like, enthusiastic and excited just to be here. It's like, I love it. That's what we love, though. See, big, and, and that's the biggest thing is that, you know, when people come up on here, maybe they could try to play a role. Yeah. But after a while, as you can see what's talking with us, the real's going to come out. Yeah. So, like I said, the real you is coming out. You're authentic with it. You're fun. That the, the, the energy that, that you brought on this podcast to the before, that's how you, you, you're you going to double that on stage. Yeah, I love it, man. I, I'm, I, like I, said, I, I wish I could go to that show next week. No, week. man. Yeah, like, on the one next month, bro, like I said, we're going to get the, the Instagrams, and we'll keep an eye out because we'll definitely check it out. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so like I said, brother, we're, right now we're going to transition over to our question game. Okay. Exactly. And then after the questions, everywhere you're going to have your final 
final say to the people. Okay? I'm done. I'm done. So one of my first questions for you is rapid fire. You know, whatever you'd like to say. Okay. First question: If you had a back to back with somebody right now, any DJ, who would it be? Underground or famous? Ooh. You do both. Do both. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do both. An underground. <laughs> Honestly, for underground, my boy Persona. I, I love him. Yeah. Boy, every time you get on stage, it's a good time. Oh my yeah. god, the greatest time! Like we we just feed off each other. Like I play a song, he's like, all right, I know what I'm gonna play next. So I'm like, yo, like in the middle of the set, I get hyped. I'm like, yo, I know what to play next. I know. Yeah. Like, we just feed off each other, that's and I love that energy because that's my fucking boy. Like persona, like I love him, bro. Like. <laughs> Always not sounding like fucking a dick rider or anything. Like, no, no, that's not boy. No, 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 no. But if I got a phone card now, I have to be AC Slater. Ah, AC Slater. Yeah. Like, give me a fucking bass out set, night bass set with AC Slater. I'm going off. Oh, I'm going fucking off. Oh, Absolutely. Would you have to tears in your eyes? Like, 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 oh yeah, bro. Like when I get the phone card, I'll break down. Like there's no way. There's no fucking way. Okay, wait. I'm gonna add to that. Go ahead. Hatch to have have scrap is the, another reason why I got more into bass house. I literally DJ bass house. Okay, my friend Fran introduced me to AC Slater and Waxing Teeth and all that stuff. But I found like UK garage, UK bass house, a lot like music from like Europe because of bass of fucking uh, half scrap. Literally, half scrap is one of my is my favorite DJ. Half scrap is sick. Yeah, he's my favorite fucking DJ man. Ooh, yeah, like that. like that, bro. That's yeah. my favorite DJ. That's honestly who I look up to and admire as becoming a DJ. Like yeah, the see. way he interacts with his crowd, the way he talks to his people. Like we saw my art last year. We did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, I was proud. He's even in mood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, for a set, my bad. I'm, inter- I'm ruining the rapper, but for, yeah, yeah. for a countdown. There was this kid with a wheelchair. Yeah, it was countdown. We saw. Him. That's all I was thinking. It was countdown. We, we all him. picked up this kid. On a wheelchair, and we lifted him up, and like I recorded the video of us doing it. He then was like, "Yo, send me that video." Yeah. I'm like, "Yo, my boy, abstract." And I told my big news, I do this. And honestly, bro, keep going. Like, I like I see that you're doing it. Like, keep going. Like, like, that's it, that's it. sick, bro. I love so that. shout out, shout out, abstract, bro. I love that for you, bro. That's sick. I'm excited for that. What's it called? All right. Question number two: Is there one venue? Currently at like say, be the U.S. etc. overseas, is there one dream venue that you would like to play? Honestly, my life goal as a DJ for a like venue is Tomorrowland. Ah, I would at Tomorrowland, to yeah. throw down at Tomorrowland. Like <laughs> that's like the biggest my dream I can get. But like even playing at the seventeen twenty show, that's a dream for me to like. I'm fucking. I might be opening. I don't fucking care. I'm playing. Man. That's a dream that I conquered, you know. So, but Tomorrowland, you know, hey, I would love to play. We're there. going to 2026. So if you're there, oh, we're, going going there. Yeah. we're going to 2026. We're going to 2026. That'd be so sick. That'd be so sick. I'm running the cut space. Straight up. That'd be sick. No, I'm gonna have to. If I play for tomorrow, I'm gonna have to get you guys backstage. I'm gonna have to yeah. do something, bro. Like I'll be sick. Yeah, yeah but that's that's, awesome. my, that's my dream, man. That's my that's dream, right? Right. I love that. But I think that's like every like DJ's dream, like to play like. Some people do Nas, and that that's cool. They don't shit on that. Someone someone do like some in LA and everything like that. Some do like underground caves and stuff like that. But I think tomorrow. Man. I think what's cool now is like um, DJ to become like you said, it's like it's born for the mainstream. So like Lenny and how he had his show in uh, Denver, mm-hmm. he did a uh, mm-hmm. is a mile high or yeah. Mexico Field. And like now, DJs are hitting stadium shows. Like I know John Summers doing one at uh, the BMO. Yeah. And then we have Lenny doing one in LA. Yeah. So it's just like I feel like because of like these boundaries being pushed, that more venues are going to come back. Now, like dude, like imagine doing a stadium show. Like, yeah. That's crazy. So I think it'll be it's going to evolve even more and more. Like I think the, the Tomorrowlands, like the like the EDCs, the uh, Ultras, and lots of ours. Oh, EDC be there. too. I'll be love to play. I honestly forgot about EDC for yeah. a second, but like, yeah, I would love to play EDC, but... I heard uh, Red Rocks. Red oh Rocks. Oh my god, that would be yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. But didn't Skrillex have like a four hour set? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah Red Rocks is sick. I would have died there. Oh <laughs> Shallow just. 
<laughs> yes, I would have probably fucking heard bang ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for that. So Wait, three and a half hours for this, but one more second. Right, 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 right on my come down and it hits. Bang ring. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm here again. <laughs> So, yeah, so I think the next question I was going to be is like obviously, like working with like producers is a cool part of it, but like, is there any artist that you want to collab with, like a singer or a rapper, or, like any kind of artist, like to do like a like a feature with, or, like, 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 a, like a big rapper, or like just anyone? I mean, anyone who could be big or small now. Yes, yeah, sir. Honestly, like, I like working with you. Like, Producers and everything, so I'm not closed off to doing like features, but I, I honestly never like thought about, thought about it. it. Okay, like, yeah. I never thought like, oh, I want, want to do a feature with this. Like, do you have a favorite artist or like a bitch? Like, hey, I want you to produce a song for me. Oh, yep. Like, AC Slater. Yeah, AC Slater. Slater. Wow, yeah. let's still be missing yeah, AC yeah. yeah. Slater. Yeah, I feel like I can really like go in on that, like, because when it comes to music, like I'm in there, I'll okay. work on the track. You know? So you were like a producer side of it then? Yeah, okay. yeah. That's cool, I like that. But like, like yeah, that. Asus later for sure. Right, cool. But I love working with like other, there's there's been times where other artists like have hit me up, I'm like, yeah bro, I'm down. Like, but like, I, I want to make a track with Persona. I made a track with my boy, uh, Kanaki. Um, I want to make a track with my teacher, Trey Vessel. Uh, there's like so many opportunities like, He's down if you ask me. Like, so you talk about, like, you talk about like the Latin artists and like the reggaeton. Like, is there a, like, an artist in there that you want to be like a banger with? I'm thinking like the dance. Chewy. Music. Yeah. Yeah, Chewy. Really? Yeah. Chewy, I would love to make a Latin. Right, I was not. Chewy. I was not thinking about that. Chewy, I would love to make a Latin because he. I think. Would would we consider? No, I think Gordo is more of a tech house artist, right? Or is yeah. Not, like, cause like a little bit of both. Yeah, I've never seen his set, but I know he goes. Hey, uh, 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 Tomorrowland this year. <laughs> because he did tomorrow. No, he did it this year. Oh he really? Like I think like like three weeks ago. Crazy. But, like, yeah, but Chewy, I think I think he's big in the Latin house scene, right? Yeah. Like, Chewy, is. like honestly, when I when I find a bunch of Latin house music, it's underground. But what I mostly know is Chewy. Like that's really? that's why I keep seeing songs about it. Chewy. Like all the other ones are like. Underground, so I don't really like know their name, but I use their songs a lot. Mm. But yeah, Chewy for sure. All right. I think the last question that we had was obviously like your base in, in SoCal. So like of all the cities you've been into, like which city has like the best crowd? Mm-hmm. Oh man, now that that's that's hard, honestly, because I DJ in. You mean city or city or state? City, city? yeah. Like here in California, I like I I E or like L O or whatever. Yeah. Like, cause ah, damn, that's that's really hard. Cause like, what's been your favorite crowd? Like what like what show do you remember? Where you're like, damn, that crowd was dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah we could definitely die. Yeah, yeah. San Bernardino. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The rooftop by the Nava Center when I used to play. Oh, right oh yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That was where we're right there, right? We yeah, moved to the like, Alpha Fire. Right, 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 when he was there, he was like, I don't get it, like why the West Coast has a hard time with tech now. Yeah. And like, it's like It is hard. You gotta got know the venue. Like yeah. hard summer probably not gonna be the best venue to play a lot of techno. Yeah. Because people are people gonna wanna be more feral. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and like a hard summer is especially I feel like like SoCal, especially like like if you come to like like Southern California with some techno stuff. You you better you better it, it intertwine it. You you better be at a at a festival to where like that's maybe most of the lineup. So some people have a good idea. But like I said, for us, we want to go yeah. hard. Like yeah. closing out hard summer, you need to bring some. You gotta bring yeah. some people with it. And so I think that's where like that was like because people love techno in California. Like people are, like just like some of the clubs in LA or some uh, what's it called? Like techno and like well, it's because all the like the foreigners. Yeah, and, like bro, bro, techno is big in Europe. I think yeah, yeah. I think yeah. a bunch, a bunch of people from Europe blow up so fast. Like yeah. foreign yeah. DJs blow up so quick. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think 
I think also because like I there's a lot of IE teachers trying to like do something and be some. I think what separates me from a lot is uh, how I DJ. I DJ so different. How I am on my crowd and obviously like me producing. I feel like me just standing producer on my name. Like oh I make music. Oh shit. Like, DJ and you make music because there's a lot of DJs that just DJ. Yeah. And there's no shame in that. Like there's like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Shaq didn't make any music at first, and he was just DJing. Yeah, he was DJing. Yeah, 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 so like, it can come and go with both, but I think like, what p- so pushes me a little further is I make my own music. So I think that that, that yeah, helps, like, sure. oh, like, I also need you, but I'm also a producer too. So that yeah. helps. I like that, brother. All right, man, I feel like that's been a roller coaster of a good conversation. Yeah, it was like, awesome. It was, it was I you you put a lot of things into perspective. You, you brought a lot of things uh, to light from a DJ and a producer's perspective yeah. that a lot of us in the crowd that's just about instead of, I'm not here getting my hands on. That I never would have thought of, bro. So I want to personally thank you as well as John. Yeah, let's go you. ahead and, and give your closing statement out to the people. If there's any, like I said, you want to just put yourself out there, any like message to the people that you want to send real quick before you go? I think. My biggest message is like, be yourself, you know, don't, honestly, fuck the man, you know, like, be who you want, be yourself, like, even if there's like, zero people in the crowd, like, like, let me start over, like, because I DJ when there was nobody in the crowd, you know, I had no one know my name, but like, if there is, I guess my message would be, if there's something you want to do, do it. Don't let anyone stop you. Don't let anyone put thoughts in your head. Because I had people put thoughts in my head. I had people laugh at me, tell me, oh, what you think is unrealistic. Like, are you a DJ? Like, no, like, do what you want. Do what you can, you know? But don't, don't listen to these people. These people are half-minded people that are chained to their nine to five, going home, whatever. Do, like, do what you want. Do what you love, you know? Don't be in this box. Take a risk. Take a take a fucking risk. Is yeah. what is what? I'm, yeah, but thank yeah. you. Take a risk. Like, if you're so used to coloring, coloring inside the boxes, go outside. Do draw your own picture. Become who you want. Don't let like someone tell you who to be. Yeah, I, I think that would be my message. I really, really love that. Well, <laughs> we can catch this man next Saturday if you're in LA or if you're not here in LA. Yeah. It's, not long, it's not a long drive. Yeah. So, catch us, man. Give us a detail. Where are we at? Uh, 1720 show in LA. I'm on at 8 o'clock. So, I'm excited. I'm there really excited go. for that. Go, brother. I'm, I'm happy for you. And, like yes. I said, if this is what the Ascending Cast is all about. This will not be your your last time that you'll be on. Oh, I hope not. I no, love this so much. Like, I feed off your guys' energy. And, like, your energy <laughs> is like, I'm comfortable, you know? Like, I'm happy here. Like, I can be myself when, like, I feel more myself with YouTube than I do in a crowd full of people. Sometimes. Oh, we appreciate that. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You, thank yeah. you. Yeah, like some people, like, like I said, some people are just like feeding you, they're not giving you the real. I feel real, like, here. No, we, you know what? That right there means the world to me because that's what we want on this podcast. That's what we strive for. So for you to say that on here means the world because that tells me, like how you used to get that gratification, like that gives you the gratification of like we're doing. No, you guys are doing it. Right. This is awesome. I'm, I'm going to share this shit like a hundred times when it comes oh, out. How do you that? <laughs> so thank you, man. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on here, dude. Like I said, you opened up our, our minds to like, well, we are, we're in the crowd and the scene other side of it, man. So thank you for that. Thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah, man, thank you for having me. This is, this is sick once again. I appreciate you guys again for even reaching out. <laughs> no, Corden, thank you for taking the time coming on. I know you have the set to work on, so... <laughs> Damn, I'm, I'm stressing again. I'm stressing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw down. I'm going to give them a set. They're going to remember. It's going to be for sure. I want them to be like, damn, we have this kid in the opener? Yeah. Like, fuck, that we're never doing that. That's what I want to try to do. Well, I love that. That's I love that. Just make, like, just make a name. Just be like, all right, like, what's this? you want to come to the All right, cool. We're gonna make you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm gonna go off. I'm for sure gonna go off. Speak that set into existence. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I love it, man. Well, okay. This is your boy John signing off. This is your boy Shiloh. And it's Gatsby. Thank you guys for having me once again. Thank you.